Today, we're talking about one of the Paradinafi's best features. Flight planning is actually one of the best features of any comparable drone out there, in my opinion. Now, when the Anafi was first released, this feature cost 20 bucks. Now you can get it for 99 cents. And get it? Oh, you should. Now, one of my favorite things about this feature is the fact that you can set up your flight plans right at home before you even go out to fly. Now, if you're going to do that, I highly, highly recommend that you only do it for locations that you're very familiar with. You just want to make sure you know where all of the obstacles are, what altitude you're going to need to fly at, and where people are usually going to be. Now, my apologies for uh, this huge mic contraption in the shot, but I do have a new mic on my wish list, so I'm hoping to make that happen real soon. So just bear with me. <laughs> okay, then we're going to jump right into the free flight six app and I'm going to show you how to set up a flight plan. Now, this is part one and part two. We're going to actually go out and execute the flight plan. And I just might take the Bebop 2 along and do the same flight plan with it, because why not? All right, then let's get into it. One thing I need to do real quick for my YouTube survival, please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to click the bell. That way you'll know exactly when I upload new videos. All right, here we are in the free flight six app. Uh, we're going to click fly, then piloting mode, then flight plan there on the right. Okay. Your map should come up. And notice here on the right here, it's showing you the last GPS location of your drone. Uh, so that's either the last place you flew or the last place you lost connection with your drone. We don't want that now, do we? So, but anyway, um, just thought I'd point that out. Now, the first thing I recommend that you do is to click on the settings icon. It looks like two vertical lines with dots on them. So click on that. All right. Uh, now these are settings you only need to set once, but they are important. So do you want the drone to land at its last waypoint or do you want it to hover? I like mine to land, so I'm clicking yes there. Now automatic progressive course means the drone will move smoothly from waypoint to waypoint rather than stopping at each waypoint briefly and then on to the next. So from waypoint to waypoint, it will be one smooth movement and you won't see the drone pause before turning or moving to the next waypoint. So I highly recommend that you turn that on. All right, now let's get to setting up this flight plan. <laughs> okay, now if you're doing this from home, you'll have to locate the area on the map that you want to set up the flight plan for. If you're already at the location, the map will show that location. Okay, I had to improvise here a little bit because my screen recorder does not play well with my GPS, uh, the GPS in my phone apparently. So it wasn't letting, letting me uh, change the location here in the map. So very, very strange, but I've had all kinds of trouble with this iOS um, screen recorder uh, on my iPhone. So it doesn't surprise me. But anyway, let's get back into this. Uh, I know exactly where I want to do the flight plan. One of my favorite places to fly. And we are going to come right over here. So one of the most important things that you're going to need to determine when you set up your flight plan is where you're going to launch from. And I see right here in this area is where I'm going to want to launch from. Uh, we're going to have two points of interest probably this here, this little flower patch, and then this bridge. Okay, so once you're in the spot you want, you're gonna click on flight plan, new, or new flight plan. Okay, then click on new. Do you want to save your current flight plan? No, we're gonna start fresh. Let me do that once more, make sure we're good to go. Yep, 
Okay, now let's cover basic functionality first. So to place a waypoint, you just tap the screen. See, just as easy as that, right? To remove a waypoint, you're going to long press and hit the trash can, or you just do undo, the undo button there. See that? And you can redo. All right, now if you long press a waypoint, you can change the altitude from here by um, entering a number that's more precise, or you could just use the um, slider here on the right. Now, once a waypoint is set, you can move it around just like that. You can change the direction of the drone just like that. And if you tap in between the waypoints, you can change the speed of the drone uh, for that segment of the flight. You can use the slider here, or once again, long press, press on speed, and you can enter a number to be more precise. Okay, now to place a point of interest, you just long press, click on point of interest, and there you go. And you can move that around the same way. You can change the height. Now what this is actually doing, this is changing the angle or the tilt of the camera, basically. It's telling the drone how high the point of interest is. So the camera will change its tilt to match that. So it's kind of important. So if it's on the ground, right, you're gonna want it to be pretty low. But if it's like a tall tower or something like that, or a building, you're gonna wanna need to know um, how tall that structure is so the drone will know, um, you know, where to point, okay? Now long press again here, you can change the altitude there as well. All right, so those are the basics. Uh, so now I'm gonna just go ahead and create a short flight plan with a couple of uh, POIs, points of interest, uh, and then I'll be back. Okay, so I finished the flight plan uh, and it's actually a lot more involved than I originally planned. <laughs> um, I have one, two, three, four, I actually have five points of interest. Um, and let me show you this. So when you create a point of interest, what you can do then, any of the waypoints that you see highlighted or outlined in black, you can click on that and that waypoint will then point at that point of interest. Okay, so you can see, <clears throat> so you can see it's color coded, right? So for the pink point of interest, I have three waypoints pointing there for this sort of aqua color, there's one, so on and so forth. So just wanted to point that out. And then um, I do have some speed changes here. Uh, actually, just point it. Uh, so 20 feet per second, 20 feet per second, 16. Uh, when you change up the speed like that, it makes the, um, the footage come out really dynamic. So it's uh, 25. So you've got some speed, um, speed ramping and um, uh, the drone will slow at certain points as well. I think it makes for some really, really interesting uh, shots. And I think I'm going to change that to 16. Okay. Um, so now that we've done that, and let me make sure to save it. Okay, yeah, it looks pretty involved. Okay, now you have even more options now that you, uh, you've you got your flight plan set up. Now click on this uh, square icon here with the uh, plus sign, you click on that. Okay, now notice a few things here. In the upper left-hand corner here, that is the total flight time for the flight plan. Now, actually, when I was setting this up, I referred to this um, 
quite a bit actually because I want to make sure I know how long this flight plan is going to take. This is incredibly important because you don't want to set up a flight plan that exceeds your battery life. Now, the Anafi manual does not address this, but for the Bebop 2, when you execute a flight plan, if you still have connection to the drone with the controller, you can easily cancel the flight plan. However, if you lose connection, the drone will finish that flight plan no matter what. Now, the Bebop 2 does not have a low battery return to home failsafe, but the Anafi does. With that said, I haven't tested what happens when the Anafi loses connection from the controller. So to be on the safe side, as a general rule, don't create a flight plan in excess of your battery or close to the limits of your battery. So I just did a video on flight time and this is one of the reasons why that is so important. Uh, so I've been averaging uh, about 22 minutes of flight time. So I would never create a flight plan at 21 minutes, 20 minutes, no way, no how. 15 minutes maybe at the most, just to have a nice buffer, okay? So I don't wanna harp on that too much, but I do wanna make sure to make that point. Flight time of the flight plan is critical. Okay, let's move on. Now the icons on the upper right hand corner that you see here from left to right, that's video recording, photos, this is to pause the video, this is drone rotation, and this green icon here is for camera tilt okay now what you see down below in the table here is what the drone will be doing between uh, and during each waypoint and you can see it's all red here because it's going to be recording video the entire time now if you look over here this blue area that you see with the arrow pointing up that's takeoff and then this uh, green here over here this is landing that you see here with the arrow pointing down. Why there's two there, I'm not sure, but uh, anyway, so you can see also, you can see the waypoints. See the pink one, the blue one, the green one, and that sort of salmon color. Uh, looks like there's more green. So this is basically giving you an overview of your entire flight plan. Down at the bottom are all of the waypoints with the heights. Okay, and the distances between those flight plans. So this is really, really good way to come and check uh, your flight plan out. Now, uh, let's talk through some of the things you can do here. So let's say, <laughs> let's say you want the drone to take photos at a certain waypoint. So what you'll do is you'll drag and drop that photo icon to where you want the drone to take photos and tap. Now you can make some adjustments, right? So I'm going to pull that back because I don't really want the drone to do that. We're just going to re record. Okay, same idea if you want to pause the recording, if you want to um, have the drone rotate at some point or if you wanna change the angle of the camera. It's just a matter of dragging and dropping into the uh, flight plan table here and making those adjustments. Now, here's the thing about some of that. Now, other than photos, you can make the Anafi rotate or make the camera tilt uh, right from the flight plan itself. Uh, let's go back, just using the arrows, see here, and the points of interest. The drone is gonna be rotating and moving and changing its position. and It's gonna be changing the tilt of the camera based on the height of the points of interest and all of those things. So I, I never really make any adjustments here using these uh, icons, unless I wanna take photos. That's the one thing that it's really, really cool. And let me show you this. You can, uh, uh, between one waypoint and the next waypoint, you can set um, the Anafi to take photos at a particular interval. So right now, this, the uh, default is every 10 seconds within those waypoints, it's gonna take a photo. That's really cool, that's really cool. 
So once you're done, you're gonna click on flight plan here. Uh, you're gonna click save as, and I've already done this. You click save as, and you name it. I've already named mine. And in this case, I'm just gonna save it again. Make sure it's all saved and ready to go for me. Okay, so you save it, give your flight plan a title. Now that flight plan will always be saved in there for you to do as many times as you'd like. So uh, if you wanted to do like a seasonal transition video, right? You do the same flight plan in each season. So you're in the same spot doing the same flight, looking at the same things. It'd make for a really cool video. I've been planning on doing something like that. I haven't done it yet. Or if you wanted to track the progress of construction of a building, you could totally do that. Do the same flight plan over this over a particular span of time um, that it takes to construct that building. And you could totally do like a time lapse video. Uh, really, really cool. A lot of possibilities and ways to be creative here, which is why I'm such a big fan of this feature uh, that no other drone company um, really does as well as Parrot does. All right, that's it for setup. So go on to part two to see this executed and I'll see you over there later.